as a UAE or Singapore ka ngayon thinking. Gusto ko nang mag-migrate sa isang bansa where I can stay for as long as I want. Na yung stay ko is not tied to any employer or any sponsor. Saan kaya mas maganda? Ito rin ang una kong tanong noon nung naisipan kong simulan ang permanent migration process. For the purpose of this video about permanent economic migration, we will talk about these two countries, Australia versus Canada. Saan kaya talaga mas maganda? Pupunta ka ba ng Australia or pupunta ka ng Canada? Pinoy professionals, let's go for a ride as we discuss some of the factors na makakatulong sa pag-decide mo kung ba't mo pipiliin ang Australia over Canada or Canada over Australia as your new home. Although andito ako sa Canada ngayon, I will be as biased as possible and I will do it in point system. So let the game begins! Pinakaunang factor na siguro is yung immigration process and citizenship. Ang point na ito will be given to Canada. Based on my experiences, having been presented of both Australia and Canada requirements, mas madali talagang makukumpleto ang mga Canadian requirements. Sa Canada, malinaw ang status ng application mo and you can also track it even on any stages of your application and you can do this online. Even, Canada responses is considerably faster than that of Australia. In terms of citizenship, you can also be granted a Canadian citizenship in three years over four years requirement of Australian citizenship. It is also relatively noting that the Canadian passport is more powerful in the passport index ranking than the Australian passport. Second factor which also relates to immigration is the PR cost or the permanent resident cost. Australia skilled independent program costs more than 4,000 Australian dollars for the principal applicant alone versus 1,000 Canadian dollars for principal applicants of Canada. The spouse and child immigration cost is also relatively higher in Australia versus Canada. So for this second factor of finances, I would also give another point to Canada. The third factor is the weather. We are from tropical countries and Australia is a clear winner on this category. Australia has tropical weather which is almost the same of the weather we are accustomed to in the Philippines as compared to Canada. In Canada, we have four seasons. Contrary to popular belief that it is all winter, it is really not. Canada has complete four seasons of spring, summer, fall or autumn, and winter. And yes, winter can be very harsh in some provinces and may last up to six months. So, if you are looking into good amount of sun, you have to go to Australia. While if you want to experience that snowy, cold weather, go to Canada. But for the purpose of this point system, I will give this point to Australia as it is more accustomed to Philippines weather. Fourth factor is the cost of living. There are a lot of sub-factors for the cost of living, but for the purpose of this comparison, I will assign points based on Numbio website of comparison between Vancouver versus Sydney and Toronto versus Sydney. Based on the cost of living comparison of first Vancouver and Sydney, you would need 7,100 Australian dollars in Vancouver to match an 8,000 Australian dollar same standard of life. This is the same with Toronto versus Sydney 
wherein Sydney appears to be relatively higher and given this data, another point is given to Canada. We are all professionals and we all wanted to practice our profession as soon as we landed on our new home country. Based on all the research we did, the ease of going back to your profession is so much easier in Australia as compared to Canada. In both countries, you may have to bridge your education, but based on few other sub-factors, Australia will definitely get this point as I know few colleagues personally who have been practicing engineering profession as soon as they landed in Australia, which we can't do here in Canada. Employment opportunities is our sixth factor. Both Australia and Canada are highly developed countries and in terms of employment, both are looking for local experience which is making it challenging for new immigrants to integrate. I am giving both countries a point as this really depends on your circumstances and how well you prepared for your immigration. Unemployment rate is our seventh factor. Although both Canada and Australia has almost the same job opportunities, Australia will get one point in this category as Australia has 5.18% unemployment rate versus 5.67% of Canada. This is based on a 2019 data which is before the global COVID-19 pandemic. Our eighth factor is healthcare. Although both countries have top-notch healthcare, based on research, Australia will get this point as they have public and private hospitals which reduces strain of waiting just like here in Canada. In Canada, although healthcare is paid through your taxes, you may have to wait longer to get tests like MRI as compared to Australia where in lines is relatively shorter. New immigrant integration is our ninth factor. With a lot of government support, the moment you received your certificate of permanent residency, I will give this point to Canada. As we all know, Canada was built with the help of immigrants and that is why all its programs is accustomed to. You can find a lot of immigrant support everywhere, you just have to look for it. There are a lot of free government services, there are a lot of courses, seminars that you can take to upgrade your skills and be at par with the ever-changing demand in Canada. The 10th factor that could be important for you is the monthly income. Getting this data from Numbio website, Australia has relatively higher income as compared to Canada. Hence, on this category, Australia will also get the point. The 11th factor is the outdoor activities and this point will also go to Australia. With Canada having four seasons and relatively colder temperature, people tend to stay indoor in most seasons and enjoy a good three months during summer season. The 12th factor is proximities, as this is considerably important to most of the immigrants. In this factor, I am giving point to both Australia and Canada. Australia being closer to Asia and the Philippines, while Canada being closer to US, to Europe, and the Middle East as compared to Australia. The 13th factor that you may consider is driving ease. In Canada, we are driving on the right-hand side, which is the same in the Philippines, the US, and the Middle East. But in Australia, it is left-hand side, so this might be an adjustment that you may also want to take and consider. For ease of adjustment, I am giving this point to Canada. 
racism could be the 14th factor and although both countries highly condemned any of this act, Canada still get a point as we have searched lesser racism incident in Canada over Australia. Canada is very multiculturally rich nation and people comes from all over the world, hence people tends to respect each other more. So there you go guys, this is the 14 factors that you may want to consider before choosing your new home country. In summary, we just want to commend these two countries for accepting immigrants, lalo na tayong mga Pilipino. Both these countries are highly developed and you can never go wrong should you choose one over the other depending on all the factors we have mentioned. Now, you can make your informed decision and whatever it is, which country man ang piliin mo, you know that it will be best for your family and alam naming paninindigan mo yon. On our next video, we will discuss about the expectations versus reality of living in Canada, so please stay tuned. Again, don't forget to subscribe share and hit that like button and see you again on our next videos.